Greetings, my name is Dr. Stephen Quay and I am chairman, CEO and president of Atosa Therapeutics. We are a public company traded on the NASDAQ stock exchange with the symbol ATOS. This explainer video accompanies a press release we put out today entitled, Atosa Therapeutics announces first patient dosing of Z and Doxifen in the ongoing recast DCIS study. Before I go further, I'd like to remind you that this presentation contains forward-looking statements and that you should refer to our SEC documents for making any investment decisions with respect to Atosa. Let's start with a bit of biology. This slide contains the stages of cancer development in a breast duct from the first picture on the left, numbered one, which is a normal breast duct. Breast ducts are the channels that milk travels in a lactating breast from the lobules to the nipple. Panel two shows increased growth of normal cells, and this is called hyperplasia. Then the hyperplasia begins to have atypical features under the microscope. This is panel three. Finally, in panel four, we reach ductal carcinoma in situ, or DCIS, in which there are actually cancer cells growing but they are not completely contained within the lumen of the duct. They have not at that point invaded the breast. The next step in panel five is microinvasion of the breast, which you can see under the microscope, but typically can't see at surgery. Finally, panel six depicts classic invasive ductal carcinoma that we are all familiar with. The progression from normal to invasive cancer can take up to a decade giving us ample time to intervene if we can identify the women in whom the changes are occurring. The next slide shows the change in the annual incidence of DCIS and of invasive cancer, beginning in 1975 and going to approximately 2015. As you can see, after about 1985, there was a sharp increase in DCIS diagnosis, an increase of almost six-fold compared to invasive breast cancer. This is almost entirely attributed to the increased number of mammograms that were being performed and the improved sensitivity of mammography as technology developed. At the present time, there are 60,000 women diagnosed with DCIS each year in the United States. They represent about 20% of all breast cancers. The current treatment options are shown on this slide and they involve either mastectomy and then optionally tamoxifen for five years or breast conserving surgery followed by radiation. And then again, the option of tamoxifen for five years. These are aggressive treatment protocols that are very similar to those used for invasive breast cancer. The problem with these treatment options is that less than 15% of DCIS cases progress to invasive cancer. This clearly shows that we're over-treating DCIS in almost one out of every two women. The recast DCIS trial is designed to ask a simple question. Is there a less aggressive treatment option that can yield similar outcomes? This slide describes the recast DCIS clinical trial. It begins with the diagnosis of DCIS and the collection of biomarkers and imaging. All patients who qualify for the trial will receive six months of oral Z and doxifen, and then there will be an evaluation of the treatment effect based on those initial biomarkers or, and or the imaging. Up to 110 patients are expected to be enrolled in this trial. This slide is a reminder of the unique mechanisms of action of Z and doxifen. There are, in fact, three distinct pathways by which endoxifen inhibits cell growth or causes programmed cell death, called apoptosis. The classic inhibitory action for a CIRM is ER blockade, where Z endoxifen sits on the estrogen receptor and blocks estrogen from binding to it. This stops the downstream effects of estrogen. The second effect, shown on the left, is estrogen receptor degradation. This is a process where the occupancy of the receptor by Z and doxifen causes the receptor to actually be degraded. This is extremely useful because it allows cell growth arrest without actually having any endoxifen around. Finally, on the right, at slightly higher doses, endoxifen inhibits protein kinase C activity. 
This again is a unique pathway for a breast cancer drug. We know, for example, that PK, PKC beta inhibition induces programmed cell death or apoptosis. So while most CIRMs arrest cell growth, that means when they are withdrawn, the cells can start to grow again. And Doxamine has the unique capability of actually causing the cells to effectively commit suicide. Before I conclude this explainer video about Atosa Therapeutics press release today, I'd like to express my gratitude to our clinical partners for their participation in this clinical trial, and of course, to our patients and their families. If you'd like to find out more about Atosa or other investor information, please visit our website at Atosa at www.atosatherapeutics.com. As a reminder, our stock is traded on the NASDAQ under the symbol ATOS. Thank you for your attention, and we appreciate your interest in Atosa Therapeutics.